Great, so I'm excited to do this Mind Detox session with you today. Um, and we're going to, well, what, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to explore and discover the root cause of? Well, I guess there's an underlying um, underlying thing with me, a challenge, I guess, uh, that is sexually related. That's, that's always been there as far as I've been aware that um, I've always struggled to kind of, what I say, feel sexual satisfaction on a regular basis. So I, I find it difficult to orgasm effectively. Okay. Um, um, yeah, and I feel I feel ready now to let go of it, but I haven't yet known how. Well, I've I, I, let, let's let's have an explore and see what the root causes. I, I've done. I've obviously worked with people with the uh, men with the other end of the spectrum, where they find it hard not to, uh, or too soon, or all that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, let's see what it might be. So with Mind Detox, we trust your unconscious mind that it knows the, the cause of this. It knows the root cause event. It knows the reason why it's doing this. It's doing it for a reason. Um, and we're going to see uh, what that might be. And uh, if there is something, resolve it. And then you go off and see what happens and then report back <laughs> um, <laughs> as to how you get on. Ready and that's how right? Mind Detox works. Okay? okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so... Um, how would you call it? If, if we're going to label it so the mind really knows what we're looking for, uh, the root cause of today, would it be hard to orgasm or sexual satisfaction? Or how would, what would the... I, I term it a lack of sexual satisfaction. I think the, psych, the scientific diagnosis is uh, either delayed or retarded ejaculation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, my, my way of kind of seeing it is, is a lack of sexual satisfaction. Okay, so... With your permission, let's find out when this problem started so that you can move on and stop it from being a problem now. Just trust your friends and sisters to all the following questions. What event in your life is the cause of the lack of sexual satisfaction? The first event, which when resolved, will cause that problem to disappear. If you were to know, what age were you? First number that comes to mind. First number that comes to mind is 10. Okay, even if you don't know why, that's fine. Mm. When you think of age 10, when you think of age 10, what's the first person, place, event, or thing to come to mind? My brother. Okay. When you think of age 10 and your brother, where were you? First location. Um, in our sort of kitchen, living room area. Kitchen, living room. Okay. So you're age 10 with your brother in the kitchen, living room area. What's happening? Um, what's happening is I'm being rejected. What's actually happening though? And that what's might be what's happening, but what, what's actually going on? What is the event, the memory? Like, what well, the memory is, 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 is not a kind of a specific, it's, it's, it's a kind of the general perspective that I see that probably happened repeatedly is that he's with friends and I'm being pushed away. We don't want you around. Leave us alone. And it's, yeah, I don't have one specific time in that it happened, but I can feel it regularly, mm -hmm. a regular kind of occurrence. So it's like, it's not necessarily one particular memory, but it's a theme and you know it happened. And it's almost like it happened so many times. It's one big, <laughs> yeah, you know, themed memory almost. Yeah. That's, that's great. It's normal. I know with me, for example, with my bullying, there's not like necessarily one event for bullying when I was growing up. There was just like yeah. the whole overall thing, you know, flashes yeah. of different memories, but not like a core one, you know? Yeah. Totally. So it's totally exactly. normal to have that with my detox. Cool. Um, so you're the brother, uh, brother, age 10, living room. Uh, brother, is he older or younger than you? He's older. Okay. Six years uh, older. Six years older. Okay. Yeah. So the 16 year olds pushing away the 10 year old. Yes. Cool. Um, so, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to mind read right now. So, I want to know from your perspective, what was it about this whole scenario? What was it about that that, that was a problem for you? Problem was that I just didn't feel worthy, didn't feel wanted or accepted, or didn't feel a value in that in that space. So you just said unworthy, unwanted, unaccepted, and something about value. Can you repeat that? 
didn't feel of any value. No value. No value. Okay. And if there were any emotions going on, what would they what would they have been? Sadness. Is it is rejection an emotion? You can feel rejected, I guess. Yeah. For, yeah, absolutely. Felt rejected. Um, yeah, sadness and rejection or feel rejected. Um, but the overriding sense, the overriding thing that I, I feel is to say I, I wasn't worthy. I wasn't worthy of, of their time or energy. But I just felt of low value, or worth, mm -hmm. like, if there's a word for that, I don't know. Um, I don't feel enough. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, Please do. I need help. There are words like unimportant, insignificant, uh, don't matter. Um, insignificant and low value, I, w I would kind of, is, is what I was feeling. We got quite a few. We got sad, rejected, unworthy, unwanted, unaccepted, uh, insignificant. So we're kind of creating a picture of how that scenario made you feel. Yeah, because I think that I, I felt, I felt that I was undeserving of their time or energy. Not, not undeserving, not worthy, mm -hmm. low value. Yep. Yeah, it's great. So undeserving. of their attention time and, time and energy or attention yeah interesting so uh sad rejected low value i'm going to use the exact words you used because you keep you keep coming back to it. Uh, undeserving of their attention Let's just test the work for, let's just test, sorry, the root cause reason for now and just see how it resonates. Um, on a scale of zero to 10, with 10 being very high, if we could time travel, go back and talk to the, the 10 year old you and you had perfect clarity and we asked you, so how are you feeling right now? You would turn to us and say, I feel sad, rejected, low value, undeserving of their attention. How much, how accurate would you say that on a scale of zero to 10, with 10 being high emotion and feels true? Sad, rejected, low value, undeserving of their attention. I'd probably say 10. The, the undeserving is the real, like, the linchpin in the, in the middle of this, I, I think. I think the undeserving thing, if we could resolve that, it's going to make a big difference for you. Sexual pleasure is, is something that, it's a, it's, a, it's a free pleasure in, in a way. You know, it's, it's something that is, it's, it's a lot of fun um, and it's about connection and intimacy and rawness and realness and, you know, and all that sort of wonderful stuff. I shouldn't keep talking about it. I'll, I'll get to <laughs> what I'm talking about. Calm down, like, Sandy, <laughs> <laughs> But if you had a belief running that I'm undeserving, then that would, t t you know, could totally impact um, the undeserving of that simple pleasure. So if there's a belief of I'm undeserving somehow, then we need to make sure we've cleared that underlying toxic belief of I'm undeserving. It'd also lead you to have to overperform, over deliver, over, you know, you'd always, you know, people please, uh, but also like constantly having to give your, you know, look your best, be your best, not offend anyone, all that sort of stuff. Um, all that sort of these traits can come from this undeserving belief. Yeah. Okay? I'm unworthy. I'm undeserving. I'm not, you know, this, that, that sort of thing. Well, all those things resonate, you know, all the things that they were the, the knock on, I'd say people pleasing. Cool. So let's just work with sad, rejected, low value, undeserving of just want to check that that's like the end of the sentence we're comfortable with it you know how would you just now we've said all of that how would you kind of end that sentence i felt sad rejected low value undeserving of i would say of people's time and attention okay or time and energy or just energy 
Yeah. Now, this is really accurate because, you know, when you're being intimate with someone, you have their attention. Mm. And if you have someone's attention in that, you, you really have their attention at that moment in time. Of all the other scenarios in life, you have someone's attention at that moment, you know? But if you believe you're undeserving of that attention, you're, it's, it's going to be a real conflict in that moment. So every time you get someone's real attention, it, that, that belief of I'm undeserving of attention is going to get triggered. Yeah. Can you see that connection? Totally, yeah. So we need to work on you being deserving of time and attention. You're really knowing that in your heart of hearts. So um, what can, you know, you're 10 years old. This is where the belief started, though. This is a cool thing. Yeah, we might want to make it present day and about sex and stuff, but it's easier if we actually keep it, uh, help heal the younger you, the 10-year-old, and then that will have a knock-on effect automatically. So, because that's when potentially this belief was formed. So, how old are you now, Ben? 37. Okay. So, you're 37, not 10. Yeah. So, what can you know now? If you know it in the past, age 10, you never have felt sad, rejected, low value, undeserving of people's time and attention in the first place. Um, what can I know now? Yeah. Um, that, that, that I am of value of people's attention. Yep. Um, but, um, I mean, I, I want to say that you might not be everyone's cup of tea, but you are someone's. Mm -hmm. So you know, I want to say that just because someone didn't find you interesting or doesn't mean everyone doesn't. Great. But I want to get even easier for you, dude. I want to make it even easier for you because you said something really, you gave me some really important information earlier. You were the 10 year old wee brother and he was a 16 year old. Okay. So let's get to facts and reality. What was really going on? Okay. What if we, if you'd known, what can you know now? If you'd known it then, age 10, you wouldn't have taken it personally. You wouldn't have felt so sad, rejected, low value, undeserving of people's time and attention in the first yeah. place. Okay, that, that as a 16 year old boy, he probably wasn't so engaged by his 10 year old brother, naturally. He'd rather hang out with his friends. Do you remember being 16? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just it's around. all about how, how you look to your mates and what they think yeah. and yeah, all that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. I'm glad I'm not 16 anymore. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rather yeah. having... Hanging out, sorry, I can't even read more in writing. Rather hang out with mates. Da, da, da. But, you know, age, like... You know, 26 to 36, not much different. But age 10 to 16, there can be quite a big difference, actually. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Oh, absolutely. And, and I'm saying that just because it's, it, uh, our job is to make this less personal for you right now. Okay. Um, well, I, what I sense is that in the early years, I was, you, you know, I grew up naturally. Everyone wanted to play with a new puppy. I had two older brothers. I've actually oh. two, but but we've been reflecting particularly on the one that I felt it most from. Um, mm. And um, everyone wanted to play with a new puppy and then kind of uh, the new puppy sort of stopped being a puppy and started to become, you know, a, a more of an adult or not an adult, but growing up. And mm. then the sort of puppy status ran out and it, and it changed. And I, I felt that my perception or understanding of it now is that I, I see it in a way that, there was almost a jealousy that I had all the attention in naught to three years. And now it's like, Hey, like I'm almost going to kind of definitely withdraw that from you. And kind of from four to five onwards, it was like, you've had your time. It's you took away the energy that I, I was getting. And now I'm going to kind of punish you by not giving you anything. That's my yeah. kind of deep analysis or the, the, the story that I've made in my head mm -hmm. around it. From the sounds of it, it sounds like you and brothers, there, there, there was this kind of uh, uh, formula running which says attention equals love. 
but it might not actually be true. <laughs> like, can you, can you, is there someone in your life that you're not giving your attention to right now, but it, that you, you know you love? Um, yeah, of course. Like, like now you're having a conversation with me, so your attention isn't on your mum, yeah. for example. Yeah. Just because your attention's not on your mum, does that mean you stop loving her? No, 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 of course. I want you to really hear this because I think one of the things to really heal this is for you to heal this idea of attention equals love. Yeah. So in you, inside you right now, can you recognize that you can love someone without having their attention on them all the time? Definitely. Okay. Might that be possible for your brother? Definitely. Okay. So is it possible that your brother loved you even though his attention wasn't on you? Definitely. Ah. So is it possible love is constant, attention not so? Definitely. Okay, cool. Where do you feel that in your body that love is constant? In my heart. And we're talking irrespective of attention being on you, love is constant. See? Yeah. 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 Okay. So in your heart, you know that love is constant, irrespective of attention. There is an age gap, there's all that stuff running, but ultimately love is constant. Cool. What would you need to know in order to know that you're worthy of experiencing that constant love? What would you need to know in order to know, what would you need to know in order to know that you're w worthy and deserving of that love? I want to say, I'm going back to what you're saying, that love is constant and attention isn't a, a sign of love, like you say. Hmm. Does that answer the question? It's the answer we got and that's what we run with. So that's yeah. great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm just looking at this root cause reason we came up with earlier and I'm wanting to make sure that we find there's enough antidote learnings to, to, to resolve it. Um, sad, rejected, low value, undeserving of people's attention. Or said slightly differently, um, sad, rejected, low value, unworthy, blah, blah. Because I haven't got other people's attention at that moment in time, which is another yeah. way of kind of another angle. It's like it's linked. Yeah. Um, how liberating would it be though if you could feel love irrespective of whether the attention was flowing towards you or not? Yeah, liberating. Less yeah. needy. Yeah. Um, at the same time, attention is a form of loving someone. And I think to make sure this is healed, we want to make sure you're comfortable uh, with attention being on you and, and having that intimate, uh, you know, eye to eye, heart to heart, close attention. Um, so is it possible for you at some point in your life to be at peace with having the attention on you or off you? Is it possible at some point in your life to be at peace with having attention on you or having attention off you. Is that possible? For sure, yeah. Cool. I want you to go to the future version of yourself that is totally at peace with this. He's completely happy having all the attention on him. He's totally happy uh, having all the attention off him. It, it, he's completely at peace with this issue. Try him on for a minute. Literally, like you could try him on. Step into him. Feel what he would feel like already free from this, completely at peace. Feel that now, and I'd like you to answer this question. What does he need to know in order for him to be that way? What, what comes to me is, I am enough. And how, what justifies him knowing that? It's a lovely thought, but just for his mind, you know, what does he, what need, what does he know, what justifies that, you know, I'm enough? <clears throat> what justifies it yeah i mean you might you might already know it that might be fine but i just when we get things like i'm lovable and i'm enough and these kind of nice learnings i just want to make sure that it's not just a happy clappy thought but actually it's it's um integrated and embodied so what would you need to know in, or to really know that i am enough um the answer I get to there, which I'm not sure is right, but I say that because I feel a, a pride in myself. Mm -hmm. 
And what justifies that, pray? Um, being happy with who I am. You know, when I when I when I when I look at myself in the mirror, mm -hmm. I, I feel a sense of you know, yeah, I'm happy with with who who, who I'm seeing and who's showing up in this world now. Yeah. I, 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 again, I'm going to put a little bit of words in your mouth, but what I'm yeah. hearing underneath this is I'm a good person. Yeah. Um, and, and I think you, Ben, you, you generally can look in the mirror and, and know that. I mean, you've got a lot of evidence that proves that you're a good person. And even if you might not be like your mind's idea of perfect, sometimes you might say something that you might think, oh, I shouldn't have said that or whatever. The fact that you care makes you a good person. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because... Yeah. yeah. So being a perfect person, and that's like in the, I, this illusionary idea of perfect, being a perfect person is different to being a good person. I want, you to, I want you to feel into your body now and feel this goodness that resides within you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just let yourself acknowledge that. I am enough, and, and there's goodness within me. You know? Yeah. There is, like, I, I see the work that you do. You're, it's coming from a good place. It's coming from a pure place. It's coming from a genuine place, you know. Um, you. There's goodness. And yeah. that, that goodness, if you let yourself feel that, I believe your deservingness, your worthy, your sense of worthiness, self-esteem. You know, I, just, I just don't Definitely. feel, I don't feel the, that feeling of goodness that you're feeling right now. And the old feeling of low value can exist in the same space. Definitely. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Definitely. There's no sense of lack of value when you're letting yourself feel that goodness. Of course. Absolutely. Cool. And I think that's, that's a big part of the reason why I've done, you know, so much, what I feel I've done a lot to make myself proud to kind of, that's kind of me counteracting that sense of, I'll fight this feeling of self-worth by doing things that make me feel really proud. And that's great. But, it's better from a pure, purer motivation, a pure intention. Yes. Uh, for yourself, it's better. I mean, yeah. the external results might be the same, but for you, it'll be more peaceful, more fulfilling. You'll be less in the back foot, like trying to prove anything, and yeah. you'll just be able to be the goodness that you are in the world. Like that's what you are. Yeah. Um, so I want, you, <clears throat> I want you to yeah. feel into that goodness. I want you to know I am, I am a good person. Not in. And I'd normally say I'm a good person, but for you, I really think I am goodness is, is the learning here. I am goodness. Um, I am enough. And love is a constant. Mm. Mm. Whereabouts in your body do you know that I am goodness? I am enough. In my heart. Yeah? And that knowing how to color, what color would it be? Um, Any color was it? Bright purple. Great. So you've got this bright purple knowing in your heart. Keep your eyes closed for now and, and really just let yourself feel into that, that goodness, that goodness that's within you. Let yourself feel it in your heart, but your chest, your stomach, your shoulders, your back, your legs. Let, I feel that this is an embodied goodness, although it can, you know, if we have to have a final location, that, that can be the heart. I want you to take this purple goodness, enoughness, and constant love-ness. And I want you to take it back in your mind's eye to age 10, to just a symbolic memory around that time where you were most likely, you know, in the kitchen, living room, previously, your, your brother not wanting to like uh, hang out with you. But this time I want you to play the movie of that old memory from start to finish with this purple knowing of I am goodness, I am enough, love, is constant, it's in line to do with attention. This is an age gap here, it's no big deal. Play the movie from start to finish with these knowings in your heart. Looking through the eyes of a 10 year old that knows this in every fiber of his being. He's breathing this goodness in and out now. He's, he's experiencing in every, every, every cell and in between every cell. And as that event unfolds, he just feels this huge liberation and freedom and calmness. He's completely happy in his own skin. He's completely comfortable to go and play on his own if, if his 10-year-old mates aren't around right now. 
he's totally understanding of the scenario and situation that it's just an age gap going on. And he can just rest and hang out in his goodness. His deservingness of, of life and being in this planet. He's absolutely deserving of being here and he knows it in every fiber of his being. He can relax into that goodness. He can do great work, but he has nothing to prove. Love is not performance related. Love is this constant flowing through the goodness of your own heart. And just bring this knowing back with you to now. Very good. Letting these learnings be installed in every single memory between then and now. So that if you need them in the future, they'll be there for you. And take a bit of a deep breath in with me. And out towards a window or door. Very good. All right, Ben. Um, can I share one thing that sort of came playing that video? Yeah. So what, what, what was really nice and that, you know, is, is I always find kind of the irony in this, these situations is that, you know, when I could see myself with that, not needing the validation, not needing the energy, you know, the energy coming to me so much more, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I really needed it at that le le age, which is probably a big part of why it was reject I was rejected. You thought you needed it? I thought I needed it, of course. Yeah. I thought I needed it and, and why I felt rejected, you know, why I thought you I was know, being rejected. Yeah. I mean, at that age, we, we're, we're kind of, pre we're living in a lot of separation at that moment in time. We've left, the, you know, any remembrance of oneness and stuff from the past, or early years of one, two, and three or whatever. And we're kind of in this, and we haven't quite got our consciousness to a point of necessarily experiencing, you know, anything more than just the voice in their head. And, and so, yeah, there can be a lot of needing, a, a lot of looking outside for validation, looking outside for love. It's just the kind of, we could talk all day about this, but it's kind of almost the journey of a human, of one, oneness to separation back to, um, you know, uh, oneness with love and peace and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Absolutely, you know, you'll see, you see that need, which is, stems from attachment um, is like whatever you need is like soap in a bath you know it, it just and if you just don't need it anymore you recognize you are it mm. you know needing need comes from a belief you're separate from whatever it is for you <laughs> whoever's watching this right now if mm. you need love it's because you've forgotten you are love if you need peace you've forgotten that the essence of your being is peaceful yeah. Whatever you think you need, you're actually forgetting you already are it. And, and if you can come back to that, which is what we've been doing today um, with you, by helping to heal the belief that would you know, prevent you from more easily just resting into that. Mm. Um, so anyway, let's see where you're at <clears throat> with this. Um, I would like you to say the root cause reason to me. I know you might, have, you might not remember word for word, so I'll repeat it to you. Um, and I want you to say it to me, and I want you to tune into the words as you say it to see how, how it feels, okay? Um, on a scale of 10 and 0, with 0 being it just feels neutral, and the emotion's gone, um, let me know how it feels, okay? So say, Sandy, I feel sad, rejected, low value. Sandy, I feel sad, rejected, and low value. Undeserving of people's time and attention. Undeserving of people's time and attention. And how would you rate that sentence as you say it? You can say it one more time just so you can check in to see how it feels now. Um, true... To the 10, uh, Andrew, like no, no motion. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it feels very untrue. Say it one more time. I feel sad, rejected, low value, undeserving of people's time and attention. I feel sad, rejected, and of low value, and undeserving of people's time and attention. So where do you say you are on a scale of 10 and 0, with 0 being that feels neutral? Yeah, neutral, 0. Sure? Yeah, absolutely. What are you feeling instead of that? Do you still feel the goodness that we talked about earlier? And you, do you still feel that enoughness? And Absolutely. Yeah, you sure? Cool. Definitely. Um, great. So I want you to think about that memory in the past, age 10, and you might find the memories there, but the emotion's gone and you feel emotionally neutral. Just checking on that memory now. Okay. Yeah. That's very natural to need to have that little breath. Sometimes there can be a little, did you check a little tiny kind of memory of almost tightness? Uh, or like, ooh, um, but that's like a memory of a feeling almost. And if you have just a breath, it should just release. Really yeah, releases it. Did you have that yeah. the little yeah. twin? You're like, oh, oh no, actually it's fine. But th th that's totally normal. 
a little check yeah you breathe yeah i did yeah yeah i had that too in the past like you resolve something you check in and it's still oh no it just it just needs to release from the body yeah yeah um yeah the breath was almost the the the, the, the kind of the re reaffirmation of the the, the 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 new perspective you've got on it mm -hmm. for me yeah what's interesting though is these uh every time you have been rejected in your life uh, will have probably been healed now because they've been tied together with the same belief um there is the common thread that runs through them which is i find really interesting so what's a fun thing to play with at some point uh, is is just you'll find that if you recall other times when you felt rejected you may find they're more emotionally neutral now unless they have a completely different root cause reason okay <laughs> but if the, if it's a sim, if it's the same root cause same belief that caused you to have you know any discomfort about that so what i'm saying is although you worked on age 10 if it happened multiple times then the multiple memories will have simultaneously been resolved yeah i call it the emotional domino effect you get if you get the right thing it just goes uh, um i want you to think about a time in the future when something like this could happen again when someone doesn't have any time or attention for you at that moment in time and, and notice how differently you respond how differently do you respond um okay yeah that, I, I mean i don't feel the need to be impacted by it that's liberating and and you've done a great service today if, if anyone being being open to being observed going through this mm. uh, but i think a lot of people can relate to many of the things we've discovered and discussed today from you know being feeling rejected uh, feeling having this connection between attention and love um recognizing i am actually a good person you know the fact that someone might be watching this video it shows they have a desire to personally develop and self-improve and wake up or all the other things you you know self-help or whatever and that comes from a desire a good place a goodness it comes yeah. from a, a, a self-love you might not even know you have because to do this is a self is an act of self-love um and and it's a it's a really powerful thing and i really honor you and praise you for being willing to talk freely about this today no thank you thank you for your help how do you feel about the session um i think it's great i think it's great to go there i think it's you know i think we live with a lot of stories on our head that aren't true and it's great to to, to readdress them and get a, a perspective that serves you and that's what i feel like i've done great well thank you for your time ben no thank you sandy really appreciate it and like i said you know i felt like you know it's important for uh for these conversations to be had and for them to be had publicly because you know there's no shame in someone going to the gym and taking a selfie whilst they're in a, a pose working out at the gym so there should be absolutely no shame people recording themselves working on their mind uh, it, for me, it should not be any different whatsoever. You know, if you're happy to take a selfie at the gym, you should be happy to have this sort of stuff recorded and out there. So I think this is a huge, uh, has a huge potential to help uh, people being willing to explore mental health much more and it's not being any stigma around it whatsoever. So that's my desire with these. So thanks for helping. No, I'm with you all the way. Thank you for having me part of it. And thank you for your help. You're very welcome. Enjoy the results. <laughs>